Once upon a time, two friends joined forces to bring you the best in horror entertainment. Brian from the north, Tim from the south, each bringing their own unique perspective to the horror community. Movie reviews, Blu-ray releases, beer pairings, games, and more. Welcome to your new home for horror. This is Civil Gore. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Civil Gore Podcast. I'm your host, Tim. And this is Brian. And we are back for part two of... The Lost Boys in our first uh, Summer's Vacation of the Year. This is uh, Summer's Vacation, uh, I guess, part one, part two. <laughs> I guess yes. the way you say it, right? Week, yeah. week two, uh, part two. So, Yeah. Th- this one is um, interesting because I'm thinking maybe not a lot of people know that these movies even exist, possibly. Yeah. I mean, so when I know when the f- first sequel was coming out, it, I remember seeing a lot about it because, you know, like it was... You know, you get this beloved 80s classics, finally getting a sequel. You know, there was a lot of hubbub about it. I think the second one kind of, like, snuck out. Yeah. But, uh, and I thought there was talk of another one, like, or a remake or something, like, the last couple of years. But I don't think that ever happened. I saw that, um, originally the sequel had planned to be, there, there was a couple of ideas floated for the sequel. And one of them was a prequel. That would talk about how mm. Kiefer Sutherland's character became a vampire, which I thought would be interesting. Yeah, well, they could still do that, actually. Yeah, would be good. Uh, the other idea was lo- the Lost Girls and focus uh, on a, uh, a girl vampire group, which I think would also be pretty fascinating. But unfortunately, both of those ideas went nowhere, and they decided to rehash the same movie over again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we got the Lost Boys to try, but we will get to that shortly. Yeah. Um, I am drinking a uh, one of my favorite. Uh, Go to house beers is Bell's Two Hearted IPA. Oh it's, yeah, that's a, a good one. Solid, uh, very solid, not terribly expensive, widely available IPA. So I decided to uh, pick up one of Bell's uh, variety packs, and in that they had a Change of Heart Experimental hmm. IPA. Interesting. So I'm going to try that live on air, and let's see how it is. Nice. Interesting. Okay, it's actually really good, but it's very, very hoppy. Nice. Oh, very Julie would hoppy. love that one. Then. Yeah, yeah, you might like this one. This one's uh, definitely, uh, I think I, w- I would say it's a step up from Two Hearted in terms of the hop factor. Oh, nice. Yeah, I have some good ones uh, for tomorrow night's uh, Kim and Ket show. I have some saving for tomorrow night. So Very nice. Yeah, that's going to be, uh, I'm lo- very much looking forward to that. Yes, that'll be uh, They're one of their watch-alongs. Which will always be fun. So. I don't think have we have they ever done like an actual watch along? I know they've done live shows. I but. think they. I, th- I want to say they did one. Um, it's because it's usually a Patreon thing. So I mm-hmm. think this one is just. Um, I think that we're kind of like honorary Patreon members in this case. <laughs> yeah. So we got invited along. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I definitely want to check that out. And, and great movie they're doing, Cabin in the Woods. So. All right, well, let's get to our featured films this week. I was looking forward to this because I had no clue what to expect from these sequels. I had heard they were garbage. Uh, we'll find out shortly and see. Uh, the first one up was The Lost Boys, The Tribe, or Lost Boys, The Tribe, I should say, from 2008. It was directed by PJ Pesci and uh, it stars uh, Tad Hilgenbrink as Chris, Angus Sutherland, a Sutherland son, uh, as Shane. Uh, I don't know if his... Uh, ass is as nice as his dad's but uh i don't yeah, think he well, showed it in this one yeah and in this he's got fangs i'm not asking him so. yeah <laughs> uh autumn reeser as nicole gabrielle rose as aunt jillian Corey feldman of course as edgar frog returns sean sipos as kyle merwin mondeser as eric kyle cassie as john monica delane as lisa grayston holt uh monica delane you would recognize from trick-or-treat actually oh she was, right right i right. knew i recognized her from something so i had to go look her up uh, she's one of the girls in uh, one of the... Uh, yeah, the werewolf one, right? Werewolf the, girl, yeah. werewolf segment, yeah. Uh, Grayson Holt as Evan, and Tom Savini comes in with a, a brief cameo as yeah. David Van Etten. And we're not sure if this is Savini or Salvini. We, I we couldn't have tell. Yeah, I couldn't tell. They look a lot alike, you know. Yeah. They... <laughs> I have a feeling, though, since 
it was in this movie, it might be Salvini. Because... <laughs> it may have been. <laughs> so I don't know if Tom Savini would do that. Um, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Which he did not do the effects for this movie yeah, or Lost didn't. Boys. So I don't know why why he was. I guess he was just just because of a horror. Yeah, he's, he's he, horror royalty. So yeah, you can get, if you can get him in something. I mean, you yeah. get him in it. Yeah. Um, so the synopsis here is the follow up to the cult classic horror film takes us back to the familiar shady surf city of Santa Carla, where vampire surfers quickly dispatch anyone who tries to invade their turf. So what we have here is a movie that was trying really hard to pay homage to the first film, almost to a fault. Well, actually, I will say actually to a fault yeah uh, i was gonna say it, it 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 tried but it failed miserably to be <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that a little yes. bit more after uh so it the the plot line is you have uh a, a guy and his older sister i believe she's older right or younger she, you know i son. couldn't tell i uh, like at one point i literally thought they might have been like you know like twins bro- I, brothers yeah i, I saw age. it i saw it brought i saw it up in a review that it was his older sister but he's very okay. protective of, of her like an older brother would be to a younger sister so i'm not sure so don't quote us on that mm-hmm. but um very very close in age we'll, we'll put it that way and uh i want to say she's younger because she was like 17 i think they mentioned that she was 17 in this. yeah i i really think i like I, I don't think anyone's ever spent the time to try and find out that <laughs> I just spent more time trying to figure this out than, than anybody who's ever watched yeah, the movie. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, they both moved to Santa Clara. Their their parents were killed in a car accident, so they're kind of trying to just scrape by on their own. He is a an ex. I don't think I don't know if he was a professional surfer, but he was a great surfer. So he's moved to Santa Clara to try to become like a surfboard shaper or something, try to get a job at the surf shop. Yeah, like is that a I, like I've never heard of that career before. Like, it, that is a thing. That no, is a I know thing. it's a thing, but yeah. I never heard that it called that like a shaper. I just assumed it was like a b- surfboard. I don't know, like something, but I don't think I've heard a shaper is the term. But yeah, I've it's heard. I've probably heard legit. Of it. Julie would know. She knows a lot of surf culture growing up in uh, California. So yeah, I've seen. Um, I've seen enough surf. I mean, living here on the coast of the beach, I've yeah. seen enough documentaries and stuff that I'm pretty sure that's a thing. It's funny how the entire boardwalk and all its rides disappeared, though, for this movie. Yeah, that was kind of disappointing. Actually, I was hoping to see some more you know, familiar places, but they 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 didn't go there. Definitely cheapened the budget with this and made yeah. it a. Uh, you're supposed to believe this little tiny fishing town was now this big surf mecca, but yes. <laughs> but I'm nitpicking. Uh. Um, so they, uh, as in the first film, these two kind of get involved with a vampire clan, this time a, a vampire surfing clan, led by Angus Sutherland as Shane. Well, I have to say, he lived up to the Sutherland name. He was pretty decent in it. He was, he was, he was all right. He was all right. I'm surprised I haven't seen him in more things. Yeah. Like, I, I haven't looked at his IMDb. Well, if this what... was your, if this was his first movie, that might have, like, <laughs> hurt him, but... Then again, a lot of these people had big careers. I mean, like Autumn Reeser was in a lot of stuff. And um, Tad Hilgebrink, uh, what I noticed him right away for is, it's funny, if you look, I mean, talk about stunt casting, okay? So he was, his first thing, he played a y- the younger Stifler brother in American mm. Pie Band Camp, which was the first, like, non- kind of like you know original sequel you know it's like that those right. spin-off sequels that like yeah. really weird but like none eugene of the levy cast. was the only yeah. yeah eugene levy was literally the only constant yeah he went from jim's dad to then he was like he was like uh, some there he how he worked at the band camp then he was uh then later on he worked at the college in one of them i'm like wh- okay this is not his, his character why was he all over the place like, <laughs> he like didn't barely got out of the house you they know? needed like, somebody for the box cover basically I guess Eugene Levy just will do anything, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you look, he looks a lot like he has a lot of the like the Stifler mannerisms in it, which is kind of funny. So he was cast really well in, in American by Bandcamp. Uh, and actually, now that he's older, he even looks more like Sean William Scott, like he could be like a Stifler oh, nice. relative, but uh, it's kind of funny. But anyway, yeah, so yeah. that, but yeah, so those, I mean, yeah, I mean, but Angus Sutherland, back to him. Uh, yeah, I thought he was actually uh, pretty decent as as the villain, one of the few bright spots in this movie. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely no key for Sutherland. No. He's, he doesn't have the same uh, charisma as he does, no. but, he, but he he does a decent job for what he's doing in this yeah. movie. And for being the le- probably the least known Sutherland, he, he you know he's got a lot of pressure on him. Yeah. Now this vampire group tries to uh, to get get a hold of 
uh, Chris and Nicole. And, and Shane takes a liking to Nicole. Um, a vampire named Lisa takes a liking to Chris. And so they're trying to kind of slowly draw them in and, and eventually, as you might expect, turn them into vampires. Now, this kind of mirrors the original plot of the Lost Boys in which um, Corey Hames, sorry, I'm forgetting character names, but Corey Hames' brother is kind of drawn into the to this vampire cult and he has to try to save his brother. Well, in this case, Chris is trying to save his sister from the clutches of Shane. So you have a very uh, mirror-like plot just with a kind of a gender twist to it. So that's kind of the whole driving plot of the whole movie is him trying to get uh, rescue Nicole from the clutches of Shane. And of course, who should step in but Corey Feldman is Edgar Frog, which kind of steps in magically. Like, I don't know how he knew all this stuff was going on, but he just kind of appears to save the day. And then he becomes the uh, the Van Helsing, I guess you would say, to yeah. the, the rest of the movie. And see, when he, I think when he comes in and his involvement in this was, was one of the key pieces why I, I, there was, I had problems with this movie. Because I don't think... Well, I'll get into it as we go to the next sequel because there, there, there's a correlation there. And um, because I felt like they completely underused him in this movie. I mean, you know, you're tr- you especially you're trying to do, you know, you're trying to, okay, the, I, you know, you're trying to uh, make a sequel years later to the, one of the most iconic uh, 80s horror movies. And now you're going to like basically water it down the, the, some of the coolest parts to it, you know? Like you, okay, first you give us like a bargain su- Sutherland, then then you you don't have like, uh, you know like, you know the Frog Brothers in it until like like I think midway. Well, I think he was in there for a second in the beginning, but then he really didn't come into play until like halfway. In the right. movie it was know, a while. Focused, yeah, yeah, they focused mostly on the the new family, which is fine if that's the way you want to go. But then then why use him at all? Is what I'm saying. You know, it's like it was very like it was just poorly uh do you think that was partly because Corey Haim was supposed to be in this movie to a much more extent than he actually is but was kind of basically fired from it because of his drug abuse yeah do you think that it was because uh Corey Haim would have had a bigger role and therefore uh he would have filled in maybe some of the gaps uh maybe yeah I mean it could have been well I mean it's so weird so if you look at the deleted so I don't know if you uh, like uh, the, the you but you bought the same Blu-ray I had right with the three pack. Yes, I did. Right, yeah. So that's really good because it actually comes with the unrated version of this film and it's the, all the, the extras and everything for twelve ninety nine. It's a steal. You get yeah. all three movies, and I mean, yes, you don't get a lot of Lost Boys extras like on that big Shao Factory disc that we gave away the 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 uh, digital copies for, but um, you get or the four K version, I say, uh, but. You know, it does have some cool things, and this one had, um, it had the, uh, you know, of course, it had the the Corey Haim mid credit sequence in there where he comes back, and you know, he, you know, he has like two minute sequence, and he kind of just like you find out that he's like he's been bitten, and he's kind of like, like kind of off the grid, and they kind of lost touch and everything, and which that he, makes the his appearance in this movie completely inexplicable because you don't yeah. know any of that in this movie. Right. When you see him, right. and you're going, "Why is he like this?" Well, and if you watch the deleted scene, they basically tease um, who's actually coming, and when and it, it, I think they they imply that it's the other Frog Brother is the one that's coming back, and which completely then doesn't make sense when you watch the next one. So I'm glad that was an alternate ending that they didn't use because the way they did it, the way they brought him back in the third one was much better. They just kind of apply, and apparently there's like Lost Boys like comics that like explain things too that don't. I don't think yeah. continuity wise makes. Yeah, there, this makes movie sense was actually uh, this movie actually had a comic series that uh, led up to it, basically. Oh, okay. The, that was kind of tied in with the debut of the film, which I need to go back and try to find those to read them. I think it'd be interesting. I think I saw you can see them online somewhere. Yeah. So, but, um, um, but yeah, this to me, it's like I mean, I just so this kind of goes along and, and the second sequel did a better job of it and we'll get to that uh, get to that when we talk about that one but this kind of the the one of the things is something that you remind you always said about the ghostbusters movie you know ghostbusters afterlife where mm-hmm. you know what made it yeah you got all the nostalgia in there but but like it's like they forgot that the original ghostbusters were comedy so and there wasn't a lot of comedy in there, and then the original Lost Boys had a lot of good whimsy and comedy to it. This one didn't have any of that. No, so I mean, automatically you already get this stark contrast 
to where it's like it doesn't even like coincide and 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 I'll, and I'll talk about this more when we get into the 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 next sequel that how how like that one did it did what I meant better because this one I felt like was trying to go for like I mean yeah there was some great gore in it but there was a horrible effect at the end to me that's just inexcusable when they they finally kill the the main vampire at the end um to me I like rewatched I said did I did my I actually, I, Julie was standing there. I said, actually, wait a minute. I got to go back. Did I just see that? Was it that, that bad of an effect I just saw? Or did my, <laughs> did my Blu-ray glitch? Because that's how bad it looked. Yeah. I mean, there was just some inexcusable things in there. And I thought it was just, it wrapped for a quick movie. It like dragged on in parts and then wrapped up way too quickly. I mean, it had some decent moments in it. But another thing is I didn't think any of the, the, the quote-unquote Lost Boys were nearly as entertaining as the originals. Like, yeah. they had, they just were obnoxious and annoying. The, uh, you know, I mean, so were the originals, but at least they had, like, some kind of, like, like uh, weird likability to them. You know, this I felt like, I'm just like, all right, this is just, this is just annoying, these people. You know, there's nothing, there's no, I don't care about them. I'm not invested in any of them. Yeah, well, to go back to the the, the mood thing, one way this movie completely goes off the rails in terms of no comedy is it's filled with sex stuff. Like it's, yeah. uh, I mean, not, not to the, it's point unrated of, the version we have. Yeah. Too. We have, we have the unrated version. I mean, not to the point of like that I would consider it like, you know, softcore porn or anything, but it's very R rated, lots of boobs, uh, lots of like sexual situations. And the vampires are kind of, uh, I think that's part of the unlikability factor for these vampires. Like the, the vampires in the first movie were kind of just they acted like un yeah they acted like the unruly teens that they were right just with but being vampires. This these people look like misplaced adults that like those adults that show back up at the high school party ten years after they graduated. Kind of like that's exactly, the kind of yeah. vibe I got, and that's a creepy factor right off the bat, and like not in a horror creepy way, and like just an ick factor like in life you know it's like yeah. so automatically you don't you don't like these people but for the wrong reasons you know it's like and i just like you know there's just no merit to like you know you almost you like feel for the ones in the original because they're they look like miss literally misplaced teens like that are just unruly and want to have fun yeah, you know, or, in, or in Kiefer Sutherland's case, a thirty-year-old, seventeen-year-old teen. And he was right. actually he was actually young in that movie. Just yeah, he summer. was. But but you know, so it's like right off the bat, you lost one of the main things that I that I loved about the original. And then the second one was the regular comedy, the 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 brother, com, you know, the camaraderie between the two Frog Brothers and and Corey Haim. Uh, joining in, and then Corey Haim and his brother, the dynamic, like all the the cool relationship dynamics. Uh, just I'm sorry, you just it they, I, it didn't hit as well when it's like a brother just oh I'm gonna protect my sister, kind of yeah. thing. I don't know. I just it didn't it didn't seem the same, and it seemed like it was just I don't know. I, I found myself like just being like the movie's only like what ninety two minutes or something, and it it stretched. It felt like three hours. I was like, I could not wait till this thing ended. I, See, I, this is where uh, Brian and I have our rare, uh, one of our rare disagreements. So I actually did not hate this movie. I actually enjoyed it to an extent. Well, hate uh, is a strong word for me. I didn't, I, I wouldn't say hate it. I just wanted it to end. I couldn't, I couldn't like, it's not that I like, hated the movie I hated there's a certain movies i will say i hated yeah. this one i just disliked a lot i think and it was more because of i think the pure disappointment in contrast between the first one so it's like this one almost made me angrier than it did you know like because it just it took away all that i loved for the first one and like like massacred it in a yeah way. see that's that's probably the difference in our opinion because i didn't have that uh, going in, I didn't care if this one did anything with the original. Like I, I wasn't expecting it to. So, uh, and I don't have like a super, super nostalgia for the first movie because I liked it when I was younger. I haven't watched it in 20 years. I went back and watched it recently. I liked it, but I don't have like this connection to it like I do with some other movies. So going into this one, I really didn't, I really wasn't banking on it being anywhere close to as good as as the lost boys. So I just kind of went through with kind of an open mind and actually probably with my expectations super lowered. Cause you had already started watching it. 
when I started watching yeah. it. So you were kind of a little bit ahead of me. So I was really expecting this thing to be absolutely horrible. And so I ended up being kind of pleasantly surprised with the caveat, the ca- the big caveat that if you look at it, not as a lost boy sequel, yeah. if you look at it as just a generic 2000s vampire movie, direct to video vampire movie, like get oh. your, set your expectations, right? It's a direct to video to mid 2000s vampire movie. Then I found parts of it fairly entertaining. Now there's, I have never seen a movie try so hard and not succeed in paying homage to the original. And this is a throwback to what I said earlier, because there is so many little dumb East. I don't want to say dumb Easter eggs in here. Yeah. Uh, there's like a, there's a, they show like a shirtless saxophone player at one point. Oh my God. Yeah. And now he's heavy. But now I he's thought fat, that, I, yeah, yeah. That, that part actually did kind of crack me up. Cause I'm yeah. like, okay, are they trying to show that like, all right, in the eighties he was svelte. And now this is the same, is this yeah. supposed to be the same guy like 20 years later? There's a really a uh, cringe inducing sequence where the uh, aunt that they're living with wants to watch the Goonies. So now you oh, got this yeah. stupid meta thing going on. Uh, so that was that was kind the of aunt was really annoying actually. She yeah, me. she was very annoying. Um, so th- there's uh, there's little nods here and there to the original that you could tell this movie was trying so so hard, but it just it can't get there because it didn't have the budget, it didn't have the talent, it didn't have the writing, it had, had none of the stuff to get it to where it wanted to be. But you could see it trying so hard, and at some point, it trying so hard actually kind of endeared it to. Me endeared itself to me for some reason like i was almost charmed by their uh their inability to do what they were trying to do i mean to me i'm still like it didn't try enough (laughs) i don't know if that makes any sense i was almost i was almost charmed by its ineptness at trying to uh, be a lost boy sequel i mean i literally only found myself enjoying it when like Corey feldman was on the screen that's well, it. he is, he's fantastic. Let's let's get that out of the way right yeah, now. Yeah, because he's and he's still he's, got that same Corey Feldman. He's rough. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the rough, can, gravelly yeah. voice. So he he's fantastic. I mean, he just goes right back into character. Yeah, I mean he he played. He's he is Edgar Frog. You don't be, don't not believe it for a second. So he was fantastic every time he was on screen. Which again, I will I'll admit he uh, he probably is underused in this, but. For some reason, I don't know, maybe it was in the mood I was in the other night when I sat down to watch this. I kind of turned my brain off, and for some reason, I was kind of somewhat entertained by this movie. As much as I know on paper, I should have yeah. hated it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, um, and, and it, you know what's it's funny? I've gone back and read reviews because I wanted to see how other people thought of it, and you get the same exact polarization. You have some people that absolutely despise this movie, and then you have other people that go, you know what? It's not terrible, you know. It's yeah. it's entertaining. It's it's okay. I mean, Cody liked it, right? She's, well, she, she said she liked the sequels. Yeah. Some I don't know which one she li- if she liked both or like one. Yeah. Or- but anyway, so for some reason, uh, this is one of those weird cases where a movie that I should absolutely have hated with every fiber of my being, I somehow ended up kind of enjoying on some weird, weird level. Now, it's not a good movie per se. It's not a great movie. But um, but it's not like to be trapped type level of garbage. Uh, to no, me. It, it, it's it, not that. I no, mean, there was, was definitely. But was don't just don't effort. go in expecting a a, a a bang up Lost Boys sequel. It's a rehash, recycled plot uh, with subpar uh, cast. Um, now I will say, they do up the gore from the first movie quite a bit. Um, not not saying not I'm not saying the effects are any better but there are at least more of it uh more I mean, they, they kick around poor salvini's head you know, yeah they kick it off and yeah kick it. That, that was probably the best part of the whole movie yeah. actually <laughs> yeah uh, but um so yeah again to so temper your expectations you're, you're either going to come down tim or brian on this one i don't think anybody's going to walk away from it going dang that was a, an excellent yeah. lost boys sequel but you may I, find some entertainment in it. Yeah, I, I think when you said you shut your brain off, you shut Red Tim off is what yes. happened. I think that's what I did. I accidentally flipped the, the he's, his his switch is right next yeah, to my you, brain you, switch. Yeah, you floor the dimmer switch on <laughs> Red Tim and he was like, he was way more accepting, you know. And like and somewhere, you know, hey, you have Joel Schumacher saying, oh, really? That you like so much? But you criticize you know what's, me? <laughs> what's kind of sad is I watched a, uh, I, was, I was watching YouTube, um, just things related to the movie on YouTube. And 
I ran across an interview somebody had done with Corey Haim right after this movie had come out, like in 2008 before he died. And because uh, he died in 2008, right? I believe that's right. Or, I think he's actually 10. I 2000, think okay, that's right. 2010. Yeah. Okay. So, but the movie came out in 2008. So this was shortly before he died. Right. And yeah. he was kind of like, this was kind of like an impromptu interview in a parking lot type thing. And he looks rough. I mean, he looks, he looks rough. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, well, he looked rough in, uh, the, in just a scene that they in yeah. the credit scene. Uh, and the guy was interviewing him and asking him about this movie in particular, and he was really trashing it and bad mouthing it. And you know, I couldn't help but think part of that was because he got fired from it, you know, for his drug addiction. But you know, of course, he was claiming uh, you know, they didn't do any respect to the original, which maybe he does have a little bit of a point there. But he was really trashing it. It was kind of a sad, whole sad thing to see. Uh, considering what ended up ultimately happening with him. Yeah. So um, uh, it kind of just put a whole downer after I'd watched. Thankfully I'd watched the movie before I watched that interview. So um, I, I, my perception wasn't colored by seeing yeah. that kind of sad interview at the end, but uh, that's, um, you know, it was kind of a sad situation all around that because, you know, uh, the two Corey's had done that um, documentary or movie or something in 2007 that was really well received so there was a chance, you know, if Corey Heyman had been able to beat his drug problem, there's a chance they could have, you know, done something and yeah. made a little bit of a comeback. And you know, especially with a movie like this, you know, there's there's every chance that maybe they this could have been much more successful with Corey Haim's involvement. But unfortunately, his, his drug addiction took over and he uh, didn't survive it. So uh, we never got to see the uh, the Lost Boy sequel we probably should have seen. Yeah. So that brings us to Lost Boys the Thirst. This one came out two years later. Uh, this one was directed by Stuart Gillard and Dario Piana. And again, Corey Feldman returns in a much bigger role uh, as Edgar Frog. KCB Dolan as Zoe. Tanit Phoenix as Gwen Lieber. Jameson Newlander comes back as Alan Frog. Seb Castain as DJX. And Felix Mossy as Peter. Uh, the synopsis here is multi arrow crossbow check. Holy water grenade launcher ready. Stake shooting M134. Got that too. Edgar Frog is locked and loaded for his bloodiest badass battle yet with the undead. So loose plot for this one is uh, Corey uh, Feldman. Edgar Frog is still a vampire hunter uh, and he is basically hired to, along with a reality show guy to, <laughs> for some reason to, yeah. to basically hunt down what they think is the lead vampire of all vampires yeah. that, that would basically st- wipe out vampire kind and Corey Feldman is is only kind of persuaded to do this uh by the lady that hires him because her brother is in danger and he's been right. captured by the vampires and so Corey Feldman has that again we return to that whole sibling rescue theme that runs throughout all these movies with flashbacks no less which yeah is... flashback and dream sequences for that yeah matter. uh and uh so he is he's finally persuaded to take one last battle uh, to the vampire clan. Um, and um, this one is definitely a very strikingly different tone. Uh, definitely See, heavier to on me, the comic. This was, should have been the second one. This is yeah. a better continuation. And I, and this one, I actually, I mean, yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, like this an amazing movie, but it was, it was definitely to me much better. And it definitely a much more serviceable sequel. Like to me, this is the way, the second one should have been a little bit where you still got that, that a lot of the crazy comedy and silliness and, and frivolity. I mean, again, they still didn't the the lost boys itself. I mean, it was definitely more of a myriad. Like there wasn't a set group as much as it was other than that main guy, you know, you really didn't get to see any of them like, you know, interact in a, in a way that they had in the first one. But this one, you got like pure Feldman. Like this is like, it's like they said, okay, you know what? We screwed up on that's <laughs> the second one. You know what? We need Corey Feldman back. And he's like in it from the get go. And he, it's his movie. And yes. it's like, and, and, you know, and I mean, he, I mean, he's full on with like cheesy one liners and silliness. And, you know, and then you got a whole bunch of characters that are, are silly also with him. And I think that like automatically brought the tone closer to the first one. Now, is it. Like, I mean, we're still, I mean, the gap between how good the first one is and this one is still pretty far. But overall, I just like the, like the premise of this one. I like the, 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 
the stakes, no pun intended, in this <laughs> one. <laughs> because, like, you know, he had the whole, his, he brought his brother back. There was that, you know, and how his brother, his brother's life kind of was at stake in here. And how, um, you know, it was cool to see the Frog Brothers reunited. They brought frog juice back. You yeah. know, it's just all the kind of cool stuff, you know, and there was a, the pun with the buccaneer, which I'm sure Tim and I like. Although, we'll say one funny thing is they have that whole sequence in there where the guy comes in and asks for a graphic novel, a novel, and they say, no, we only have comic books here. Da, 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 and there's that whole little funny sequence. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look, there's a shot of them standing in front of the store, and literally it says, comics, books, graphic novels, right on their window. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, so obviously, the continuity error was a little mixed. But I loved the new characters that, that came along with it. I loved the Zoe character. I loved uh, the guy Jake that was in it for a little bit. He was like a former politician. Where like they showed how like this vampire uh, ism was almost in Washington D.C. literally to yeah. run the government at one point in a funny little sequence, but then he came back later and he's like this weapons extraordinaire. Kind of reminded me of that scene in Terminator Three where they go and they find all the weapons and and then I love Klaus, which was the guy, the reality guy's cameraman, who was this goofy, lovable, like you know, klutzy kind of guy, and it was just like they form like this ragtag team in it. And that's what I kind of liked, you know, like I felt like the second one didn't have that, it, you know, it had like literally like it had Corey Feldman and the other two people that he was fighting were with him were kind of vampires and stuff. And it wasn't just the same, you know, it was, it was just, it was all about the, the, the brother sister thing more than this. This I like back Cause they go back to truly Corey Feldman's story. Yeah. The Frog brothers story. And that's what people wanted. That's what, I think people wanted from a sequel if you're going to do it. Now, granted, is this a, like, if if you had your druthers, the sequel would have been totally Corey Haim, Corey Feldman, Jameson, New, Jameson Newlander, like three of them going up against somebody, you know. But obviously that could not be with, uh, you know, Corey Haim's uh, a timely death, but they did get Jameson Newlander back. Now I'm kind of bummed we didn't go to talk to him at New Jersey Horror Con. I know. <laughs> um, but, uh you know, it was just hard. But, you know, I think, though, it's like overall the sequels, like, you know, were missing that, like, whimsy, I said. But this one at least did a really good job of trying to put it back as much as possible. And I think tonally this is much closer to the first one than uh, than the second one was. So, I don't know. I actually I, – I would actually say I enjoyed this one a lot more, like a lot more than it had I had any right to, you know, it's like – yeah, I, I don't disagree. I mean, I, I really like this one as well. And it definitely captures the tone of the first movie much better. Even though the uh, the plot is kind of all uh, Corey Feldman, which is nothing wrong with that. Uh, it The only thing I, I, I kind of missed uh, from the first two movies is the actual Lost Boys. Like the, the fact that the vampire gang in this one just didn't. There it really is. It, like yeah, it wasn't said, really a gang. It wasn't a set gang. It was like a couple of people that like you saw a couple times. You know? Yeah, it's so like, I never, I never got the feeling that they were battling like this. One of the best things I like the most about Lost Boys is the idea of these, uh, like we said in the first episode, these like lost teenagers that are never going to grow up. And there's this like, how are they going to act? Like, how are they going to act with no supervision, ultimate power, no fear of death? And exploring that, whereas in this, it's kind of like, it's almost like they're fighting like vampires from Blade or something. It's like they're all yeah. corporate and they're, you know, grown up and they're, they're, it just did not, that piece of it didn't have the same feel to me. It didn't. But if you think about it, if this is, let's say this is it, this is the trilogy that they've made, it makes sense that there would be some kind of advancement into that. Well, like, yeah, like you know, if they're going to take out the head vampire, obviously they're, they're not going to be like teenager. So right. Like you're going to have beach. a. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to have almost like, you know, you're going to be in, in their turf, their lair, like the ultimate baddie guy, like the Emperor Palpatine, like the, you know, the, the, you're going against the higher, like, group. So you're not going against the, the so called innocent, uh, teen newbie vampires here. You're going against the, 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 the upper echelon, so to speak. Right. Um, I, I gotta say those, like some of the, the, the things that like the one liners like that. My favorite one was when he goes, 
it's time for Mr. Frog's wild ride. You know, because because they <laughs> yes. called back that joke where the guy kept calling him Toad. You exactly. Know, like yeah, that was guy. great. So he came back. So there's a lot. There's a lot more clever writing in this one, I think, because the quips were better in it. The one liners were better. Like when he goes like, but the favorite thing was when he goes, oh, it's a whole bunch of virgins over there, and he's like, vampire filet mignon. <laughs> you know, it's like it just had like terrible cheesy lines that like. Oh, they Just, were so like, good for him. They're, yeah, they're so bad that they're good. Like, yeah, they they really like, doubled down on Edgar Frog's yeah. uh, like cheesy one liners. Like, they totally doubled down on it, and I was totally okay with that. Yeah, it's like AI. I mean. It's like the AI chatbot wrote. Yes, you said put in like all of 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 Corey Feldman as as a frog's li- uh, Edgar Frog's line, and, and let's see what you come up with. And literally, they probably what they came up with because it's i don't think you could get much better than some of the lines he had and um this one's much more action-packed too right because it's not yeah there was a you didn't have to spend time on the relationship piece so much because he doesn't i mean Corey feldman doesn't know uh zoe that that hires him so is that zoe that hired him? no or, zoe's his friend sorry, the one sorry, in the comic zoe. but yeah yeah zoe's that, the friend um uh Gwen, something Lieb or something Gwen lieber yes Gwen yeah lieber. so when she hires him he doesn't really know her from Right, Adam. So you don't have that. Yes, he he knows that she's trying to save her brother. He knows of her. He knows she's the writer. That's yeah, he knows like, of her, like, yeah. and he he knows that she has a brother that needs saving. But his we, there's no relationship between him and the brother. So there's nothing that there you have to develop. They don't go into a lot of detail really about her and her brother. Not to the extent of like the first two movies did with the sibling stuff. So you didn't have to um, you didn't have to waste a lot of time with that part of it. So right. it was, it's yeah. way more like an action, almost like a heist film where here's the ragtag team. This is their plan. They get everything together and then they go execute the plan. That's the, that's the kind of the structure of the movie, which is way different from these first two movies. Yeah. And, you know, and I kind of like one of the cool uh, ele- the elements that I like, too, is that like. This time they kind of had it more of like they they, they kind of had a cool plot to how like so many vampires were or could have been like done because with that drug where it was like like a you know a rave drug and these little vials that were turned out to be vampire blood. I thought that was a cool way of of kind of like them like saying okay we can't go like person to person here we need to we want to take over the world now we're just right. gonna we'll do it the fast way and i thought that was an interesting take on it like i thought that was kind of a cool like little piece like for some reason i just like that plot point and i don't know why i don't know you know and i'm wondering if i like this so much uh way more than i thought because the second one to me i just didn't like a lot and this brought back enough of what i liked about the first one to be to to make it uh you know enjoyable for me but you know, because when you think about when we were discussing the first one, like, you know, all those characteristics we were describing to me just were not there in the second one. But at least like I, I'm finding enough to grasp onto in the third one that I'm like, oh, OK, oh, I like that. Oh, this guy. You know, that made me laugh. OK, I like this. You know, there were just more things that uh, that appealed to me in this last one. And, you know, and it, it felt, and I say last one because it feels like like. If they they don't need to make any more of these, uh, yeah. you know, unless you know, I and I don't think they would. I mean, oh, they teased it could be like you know, at the end there's a tease that they could have could continue, but if they haven't made it by now, I really don't think they're going to make it. <laughs> no, um, it would start getting a little. I mean, I I just don't. E- even in two thousand eight, uh, two thousand ten, this is you know, this was kind of not this wasn't really like a franchise that was going anywhere. It was a cult mm-hmm. film. But uh, I just don't know why they waited so long to try and make a sequel when they they still had like, you know, like a couple of years later. Why didn't they try and make? Yeah, this that's film? what I'm saying. Like there was no interim. It was like they they just decided to go back and make this direct to video sequel to this cult movie, which was really unnecessary to begin with. Let's face right. it, because if you weren't going to make it, you know, two years later, then there was no point in making it at all, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I. I to to make to to make another time jump of thirteen years, fourteen years, fifteen years after these kind of mediocre sequels, like why I, why why would you do that? I just have no, I have yeah. no desire for it. I have no desire for it. Yeah, and I'm afraid because we're eventually going to get a remake of this, and I have a feeling 
the way they're going to go about it is completely the way they like they did the second one where they're just going to try and go all dark and gory and as as creepy as possible which is fine you want to make just a regular standard vampire horror movie but the lost boys was something special for a reason you know it had that mix that everybody liked so don't go back and just put slap a name on it like you know and, and just so you can get the recognition or don't just remake it because of the name recognition, you know, like if you're going to remake this thing somewhere down the road, because, you know, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. At yeah. least, at least do the right homage to it and may add the comedy, add the, the whimsy, add the, 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 you know, the, the frivolity of the Lost Boys while they're, they're still evil. They're still, still act like teenagers, misguided teenagers. There was a lot that made that movie that's, the special thing that it was like, don't forget that if you're going to continue this franchise and they seem like they forgot it in the second one, tried to get back to it a little bit in the second, like if they would have blended a couple of the pieces of each of two and three together, they might've had a, the proper sequel. Yeah, you're I right. Guess. Yeah. I mean, like I, I would have loved to seen in the third one. I, I just would have loved to seen um, again, like that whole vampire gang dynamic that, that ran through the first two, because I really yeah. like that part of it but i understand story-wise why i kind of had to go where it went but um i just yeah i just looked i was just looking up uh angus sutherland he hasn't done anything he was yeah in, although he did he was one of the producers on uh 1917 that movie <laughs> recently he was in harold and kumar escape from guantanamo bay of all things but uh yeah, yeah so, i don't even remember who that <laughs> who he was in that but yeah so, i mean i would have there there are there are bits and pieces of the second one that I would have liked to see in the third one to really, really flesh it out. And then there's definitely a lot for the third one. I would have liked to see in the second one to make it more of a lost boys movie. But, um, other than, uh, I mean, really the, the irony of the second one is that it copied the lost boys plot so closely and it filled itself with so many nods to that movie yet to be so devoid of the soul of that movie. That's why I was saying it's the most trying hard movie I've ever seen that never, that never did what it was trying to do because it did not have the same feel as the first movie. They completely went in a different direction. It's almost like uh, I was trying to think of a kind of a parallel to this, but you know, it'd be almost be like trying to remake. Well, I mean, perfect example. It's a perfect, perfect example. Ghostbusters afterlife. There you go. That, that is, right. that that's is why the I example. use that because yeah, because yeah, you know, they they basically took here's all the Easter eggs for all the fans. Here's all the nostalgia. Here's all the throwback. But yet we're we're gonna not. But but imagine if Ghostbusters Afterlife had actually tried to adhere to the plot of the original movie. That's right. that's even worse. Like what if it had not even tried? I, mean, I think Ghostbusters Afterlife was guilty of not being a comedy and being too heavy on the nostalgia. <clears throat> imagine if it had done both of those things, but had also copied the plot of Ghostbusters. Except this right. time yeah. the uh, the the kids or something were the new Ghostbusters, but they did the exact same thing. <laughs> that's the kind of how that, that movie was. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, but like you, yeah. And like, that's it was so funny is when I was watching this, that's all I, you, I always think of your reaction to that. Like, and it, to me, I got caught up in the nostalgia when I saw Ghostbusters for life. And it didn't like, to me, I said there was something, I liked it, but there was something off about it. And it wasn't until you said that, well, they forgot to make it really a comedy. And Paul Rudd was in there and he was funny, but like the overall mo tone of the movie was not comedic. Uh, and he was only funny because he was Paul Rudd, really. Right. If you look at yeah. the actual script, he's not. It's not really that funny, even with him. And you're just kind of yeah. laughing because it's Paul Rudd on the screen, and you're supposed to laugh. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping the next one will be. You know, the next one's got it adds Pat Oswalt to it, so there's a lot of other, like some more comedians. And and I heard Bill Murray's back. They're all back for this next one again. So I think it'll be. No, I, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I think. Uh, I think the they got the nostalgia out of their system. Thank God they got all of that out of their system. I think the next one is going to be much better because I think now they've already established, hey, everybody remembers Ghostbusters. Remember Ghostbusters? Hey, remember yeah. this? Remember that? They got all that out of their system. Now they can actually focus on making a good Ghostbusters movie. I, I just wish they would take like $20 million and drop it on Rick Moranis's lap and say, please just come just, back. Yes, for, for Just something. for a cameo at Anything. least something. Come back, yeah. please. Rick Moranis was – you cannot under – sell how well he how much he made the first two movies you know he was such a key piece to it you know and it's like you know and so it's like you know so many lines that you remember from the you know yes you remember of course the 
the Ghostbusters, but like Rick Moranis was like a big key piece to it. And I know he retired from acting and, you know, hasn't seen been in anything in years, but they got to find a way to bring him back, even for a cameo. Yeah. Well, man. Uh, anyway, so not, not to make this the uh, Ghostbusters yeah. podcast, but uh, there are some parallels there. So, um, yeah. but yeah, I, so overall, final thoughts on uh, the Lost Boys, The Thirst. Totally agree with Brian. Uh, to me, it's hard. Man, this is, this is hard for me because this is the better Lost Boys sequel by far. Yeah. Uh, it has the comedy. It has more uh, Corey Feldman. The tone is correct. There's some, like I said, there's some things I would have liked to bring out of the first movie that this one kind of doesn't. I mean, this one doesn't have all those really those callbacks to the first movie only because the sequel was kind of in there between them and I had already done all that. So I think it, I think if this had been, like you said, if this had been the second one and they had been able to add more of those callbacks in, I think it would have been a much better film. But um, I did like the flashbacks though, because at least that brought you back to the original. One. True. Yeah. They had some flashbacks where they used footage from the original movie, but um, yeah. So overall, I really like this one as well. Uh, it's funny that in terms of like the IMDB ratings, they're very close. Uh, uh, the thirst got a five, five out of ten, and um, tribe got four and a half. So not too far apart in terms of uh, people's opinions of them. But I think by far this is the better Lost Boys movie. Now I'm going to be quite honest in terms of which movie did I was I more entertained by? Um, I kind of. S- somewhat lean towards the tribe unfortunately to brian to brian i kind of actually enjoyed that one more because i for some reason i liked the uh and maybe it's because the plot was so similar i don't know but i I just liked the whole vampire gang dynamic um i liked kind of the i ended up kind of liking the brother sister thing so like I, i was more entertained but at the same time i will caveat that with when I watched that movie, I was in full movie watching mode. I was I had my popcorn, I had my drink, I had my big screen TV. I was settled in, and I was there. Tip out everything. Yeah. Kind of like the Jim Brewer yeah. thing. I, so I was there to watch it. Uh, and when I watched The Thirst, I had to watch that today. I basically had to watch it on a lunch break. Uh, mm. I had to watch it on a computer screen, so I was rushed. And I think that that's not conducive to to watch it a film. But of course, when you're doing a podcast and you're, you're trying to, you, you're juggling recording schedules and work and everything else. Sometimes, unfortunately you do what you got to do. Yeah. You got to like fit it in, in yeah. odd places. Like there's times where it take me like three sittings to watch a movie because I like literally I'm just piecing it in as where I can. Yeah, exactly. So it's time to record. So I fully admit I did not watch the third one, uh, in the same atmosphere as I watched the second one. And that definitely absolutely could have colored, my perception a little bit, but anyway, at any rate, uh, I think Brian and I's rankings are still going to match up when all is said and done. But I think the big takeaway from this is I went in expecting these two sequels to be absolutely garbage. And I came out not feeling that way. I felt like they were both fairly entertaining. Now, granted, they're not anywhere close to the level of the first movie, but they're not terrible movies. I mean, I I wasn't uh, I wasn't like I wasn't bored. I wasn't um, I didn't have any distaste for either one of them. Um, I, certainly, I think the third one was a better Lost Boys film. But yeah, I, I, maybe my expectations were just so low. But I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's like. I know I've been criticizing the second one, but I, you know, and it, it also remember we literally just watched the first one, so you know there wasn't a ten year gap for us, um, or no longer than that. What was it like? It was two thousand eight. It was eighty nine to two thousand eight. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it wasn't the it wasn't a uh, for us it was like a week gap. You know, it's like. Yeah. Uh, to watch the two things uh, apart. So, I mean, I think when you watch the original Sorry, and you watch this, yeah, and you watch you watch a, this and then you watch the part two right after it, it's kind of hard to, like, for me at least, to kind of, you know, like, it. definitely the, the differences uh, appeal more. And I think that's, funny enough, I think that's the same reason why I, the third one I liked is way more than I did because I think I felt like, 
I was like, the whole time I was like, now why wasn't this, this should have been the second one. This should have been the sequel. I found myself literally saying that in my head the entire time I was watching it. I'm like, this is what I wanted from a sequel. This is what needed to be there. And was it perfect? No. I mean, because I would have loved to have Corey Haim in it again. I would have loved to have, you know, like, uh, you know, a lot more of the kind of recurring character. Like, it would have been fun to have, like, some of the, uh, like, cameos of, uh, you know, with Jamie Gertz and uh, Jason Patrick coming in there. But, you know, you're not going to get that anymore, no. unfortunately. And, you know, I think the other thing that was missing for me from that movie is you really didn't get to see Santa Clara. It was really just yeah. kind of... T- kind of I think that's why I just didn't have the same feel. Like you, you didn't have that beachside feel. That even the second one brought that big time. It wasn't the same Santa Clara per se, but you still had the feeling of hanging out in this town. Yeah, I mean, was the third one even in the same area? Like I think it was. Well, it was on an island where the the finale was. Right. But yeah. It seemed like he wasn't. Like I assume, like Corey Feldman was living in the same place he was, right? I mean, yeah, that was. It seemed like he was in a completely different town. Like there was, like when the comic book store that was there, like I mean, yes, of course it could be modernized from what it was in '87, but like, how do you take away like one of the most iconic filming locations is the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, and now you got none of that in any of the sequels that's supposed to take place the same spot? Yeah, I I definitely would have liked to seen seen it take more place in like contained more within Santa Clara. I think that would have been, I think that would have been the, maybe the missing piece that would have solidified it and made, made the thirst that much more, but you know, they got half, they got most of the way there. They got, they got part of the way there, which is um, in terms of like capturing that feel. So you good on them for at least changing direction from the 2008 kind of sex fest that they were trying to make it into and try to actually make a horror comedy again, which is, which, yeah. you know, they succeeded for the most part. Uh, I, there were some very entertaining lines and stuff in there. So, um, also, yeah. did you catch though? They did reference um, uh, the the rest of the Emersons when they were talking about how Corey Haim, you know, was uh, was killed off. Uh, you know, in the, in the in the you know in the, I guess in the behind the scenes of the movie. But um, they did say but he said, "What about Michael and Star?" Which you know, of course, was uh, yeah. Jason Patrick and Jamie Gertz. And he says, "No, no, no. I'm pretty much." Uh, persona non grata from the whole, uh, you know, the whole Emerson clan because he had to basically kill Corey Feldman, yeah, ca- uh, Corey exactly. Ames' character. So it, it's kind of neat that like you find out, okay, well they're still together, kind of, I guess, him and Star, and they're off doing doing whatever, adventures. You know? Yeah, at least they have that yeah. that, that throwback. So yeah, um, I kind of like little tidbits like that. Like they definitely they definitely made a major attempt to make up for what was missing from the second one. So yeah. So if you guys uh, have not seen these sequels. Um, they're hard to track down. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, okay, your best bet is what we did that yeah. 12 99 on Amazon three pack. Yeah, You cannot, this is crazy. You cannot find the unrated version to rent of the tribe, the unrated version. I can only find it to buy. You can buy it digitally, but you have to buy, it. you have to buy it. The rental is the theatrical ver- or not the theatrical version, the uh, yeah. direct to video, just on un- the rated version, I guess you would say. So, um, uh, that that was that made me even more glad that I bought the Blu-ray so I could see the unrated. Uh, and then, yeah, I mean, for twelve ninety nine, it's a steal for three movies. I mean, you my, well, you 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 have no choice but to rent these things, so you're going to spend four bucks a piece anyway. Yeah. So you're going to spend eight bucks on the two sequels. Uh, you might as well spend twelve bucks and get the Blu-ray of all three. Yeah. So and you get special features on it and everything, alternate endings. Yeah. It's, it's really it's a good it's a. I usually tend not to buy like I hate buying those. Sometimes those sets, yeah. where, you know, it's like that where it's like, but it's three individual discs, number one, which is a plus. And two, it's like they don't seem to skimp on it. It's almost like three. They know that, OK, nobody's going to buy part two and three standalone. Probably we need to just package it in there with the original. <laughs> yeah. now, I would still double dip and get uh, possibly get that 4K one. Special Absolutely. Edition original yeah, I think I'm going to get the that original, now. but yeah. But I, you know, I'm like, you know, for the podcast, I'm going to get this and then I'll just I'll buy the, the yeah. original one uh, at a later date. Since it was a gaping hole in the monolith. For some reason, I thought I had it, but I realized it was I had it on DVD, like an old version. I'm pretty Blu-ray. sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've got a version on DVD. I'm almost positive as well. Uh, just the original DVD. But yeah, yeah. If you guys have not seen the sequels for 12 bucks, I say it's worth it. It's worth they're worth yeah. watching just to just to complete the trilogy. Um uh, they're not probably not as bad as you may have been led to believe. So uh, yeah, check them out and let us know what you think. I'd be curious from others out there 
that maybe disagree and say these are just complete trash i'd love to hear your your opinions on these but um we will be back next week with another Wait, we got to do our rankings though oh we forgot we didn't i mean they're pretty i think they're yeah i think you guys have probably already guessed our rankings but yeah you're right we have to do the rankings i've I've been out of summer slication practice for a year i know um so yeah i'll I'll just start off my ranking is going to be same as yours probably brian which is going to be the lost the lost boys is obviously number one yeah I'm going to put Lost Boys The Thirst as number two, and I'm going to put Lost Boys The Tribe as number three. Now, for me, in terms of pure entertainment value, how much did I enjoy the movies? I think two and three were were probably much closer than Brian's. Um, I probably could have flipped them, depending, but I ranked them this way because I'm ranking them as Lost Boy movies. And yeah. as a part of the franchise, The Thirst is definitely a much better Lost Boys movie in terms of tone than the tribe was. Yeah. I have the exact same rankings uh, for reasons, which we've already discussed. Um, And, you know, I, you know, I'm wondering if like, if I ever like went back and revisited to like, uh, like at a distance, I feel a little, little more forgiving for it, but I just, you know, it's like, I, I, I tried to, I think I tried to put my, my, uh, myself in, I'm okay. Here's a movie that got a sequel. Uh, so many years later, the anticipation building up for it—it's got. It must have been like tremendous for the big fans of the movie, and then to get that, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, where was where was the you know? It's, it's like it seemed like it was like almost like another plot altogether that they just said, hey, you know what? Let's make this a Lost Boys movie, and we'll throw in Corey Feldman now. Kind of like it almost like gave me those some those mid middle uh, Hellraiser sequels you, uh, at some point. I think you have to go into it thinking of it as a late 90s, like a late 90s horror movie where there was like, well, it was like, when was the American Pie? Like, well, it was like sex comedy type days yeah. where they were doing a lot of like, a lot of nudity and stuff, but uh, mixed with a horror movie. It, it feels very, di- I'm, I'm honestly, it does not feel like a 2008 movie. It feels like a late 90s very early 2000s movie uh it, it definitely feels dated to me because of the the whole sexual aspect of it it feels very of that time of when american pie and something about mary and all those movies were coming out even yeah, though those are like the r-rated yeah comedy, i mean even though yeah. those are comedies it still kind of had that kind of kind of a little bit sleazy feel to it um, if you go in it with that mindset, I think you're you, you'd probably enjoy it. Just don't go into it expecting a great Lost Boys sequel. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I think those rankings are solid. Um, and yeah, we have another franchise queued up that I'm really excited for coming up next week, and we will be covering. Well, I don't want to give too much away because we are going to have you guess. Because no, we're going to start teasing. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell you how many movies are in this next franchise. I will say that it's more than what we just covered. Yeah. Put it that way. So uh, put your thinking caps on. We're going to start teasing uh, on social media about what that next franchise is. Uh, If you pick correctly, we do have our prizes came in uh, that we're going to give away for the summer slaycation. So we do have those in hand. Yeah, you should uh, actually. Uh, we should. We need to. Uh, we should post a picture um, of the prize. Maybe it'll put the stakes up there. Uh, yeah. Get everyone excited because uh, I want to. Should especially want to. Um, Send it out to uh, David McHugh, Horror Mailman. He won. He won the first one, so I yeah. think he'll like that. Yeah, prize. he won the first week. So yeah, check our Twitter because we are posting um, a teaser. Uh, and if you're the first to correctly guess what franchise we're covering for that next week, then you're getting a Civil War prize. And I, and I may throw in something else from the prize closet. I don't know yet either. We'll see. So uh, so definitely keep an eye on social media and, and look out for that contest. Um, so yeah, that's it. And we have a lot, I mean, this was to me, this was the, um, the lost boys was definitely the, the one I was looking forward to the most in terms of the original film of covering, but the franchises we have coming up, I'm probably more excited for much more excited for as a complete franchise Yeah, so, to cover. So we'll see, see how it goes. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, as a, as to re- revisit Lost Boys, uh, the original was was the highlight, of course, of this franchise. So that was <laughs> yeah. it was a good start to the summers like it's nice to ease into your summers like exactly. You, know, yeah, you, you don't want to go. You don't want to go. F- 
you don't want to go to that big vacation right off the bat. You need to like ease in, you, take a little vacation. Because you're going to be tired the whole time. Yeah. Then you're not going to enjoy yourself. And you're going to need a vacation from your vacation. You don't want all that. Exactly. So, all right, guys. We'll see you back here next week. Take care. I hope you all are having a wonderful summer so far. And we're going to try yes. to 